The goal for this video is to allow the user to create a new account or sign into their existing account using Google Sign-In with Firebase Authentication. And once they've signed in, they should navigate to a new screen, which is the main activity. And on that screen, they have a menu option to log out. So what I have here is essentially just a new project. I called it Emoji Status App. And there are only two activities. So the only thing I really did after creating the empty project template is I added one more activity called Login Activity. And login activity is the one where I added these intent filters. So when you start the app, the first thing that we're seeing in the emulator here is the login activity. And our goal now is to integrate Firebase authentication and add a button so that when they hit that button and successfully authenticate, they'll navigate to this main activity, which is for now just an empty activity. If you haven't already watched the first video in this series, which talks about the context and the architecture for our app, I would highly recommend doing that. So I'll leave a link for that in the description. But once you've done that, come back and let's start coding. The first thing we'll do is create a new Firebase project for our application. So go to console.firebase.google.com and hit this add project button. I'll call this the same as what I called my project, which is emoji status app. Hit continue. Let's disable analytics for now, just because we don't really care about it. And then create project. And this will take a minute or two to finish. All right, so once it's set up, hit continue. And we're gonna get started with the Android version of this. So the app package name is something that you set up when you were creating your project. So for me, it's it's this. EDU stands for RK Pande, followed by the app name. I'll leave the app nickname blank. And what you need here is a debug signing certificate SHA-1. And this is needed because we're going to be using Google Sign-In. So if you hit this link, then you'll actually see how you can do it based on your platform. I'm on a Mac. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this. So I have the terminal open over here. So I'm going to copy that, hit enter. And the default key store password is just Android. And then here you can actually see printed out the different certificate fingerprints. The one we care about is the SHA-1. So I'll copy that. Now go back to the setup and paste that in here. Now we can hit register app. And then what this is gonna do is it's going to create the project for us and put all of the information we need to associate our Android app to Firebase in this Google services.json. So download that. And then in Android Studio, open up the project window, the project tool window, and we want to drag the Google, Google services.json into the app directory. So I have it over here, I'm going to drag this into app. And I have the confirmation dialog, hit enter, that's good. Let's go back here and hit next. All right, so in order to add the Firebase Software Development Kit, SDK, there are a few modifications we need to make, both at the project level build.gradle file, along with the app level build.gradle file. So in the project level, the only one that I found that I need to add is this one, class path. Copy that. Now let's open up Android Studio. And instead of Gradle scripts, remember there are two build.gradles. We're going to be modifying initially the one at the project level. And we're going to be adding this line for the class path Google services. Now we go back. And at the app level build.gradle file, we are going to, we're going to add this apply plugin line. Let's open up the build.gradle at the app level and add that over here. And then in the dependency section, this is where we're going to eventually add all the libraries for Firebase. But we're gonna do that later. Just tap sync now to make sure that's succeeded. Cool. So now let's hit next and then let's continue to the console. So I closed all the other tabs except for the console. Tap on this button here for go to docs. And we care about Android. And in particular, if you scroll down, we want authentication go into the Android section, and Google sign-in. So we're gonna follow pretty much this guide over here. The first step is, we already did the first couple here. The next thing we need to do is add the dependencies for Firebase Auth. So I'm gonna copy that, and go into the build.gradle, and add it right over here. And one thing is that because we're using Kotlin, we can use the Kotlin version of this library. So we just add dash KTX here, and then tap on sync now to make sure I didn't screw anything up. All right, looks good. And we already did the SHA-1 fingerprint. And one thing we need to do is in the Firebase console, we need to enable Google Sign-In. So go back to here, go to Authentication, Sign-In Method, and we want to enable Google Sign-In. You need to add in a project support email. Tap on Save. 
Okay, that's enabled now. So one thing you can do here now is open up the Google sign in to your Android app, but we're going to borrow some pieces from here. The first thing I want to do actually is I want to integrate in the sign in button into our app, this UI. So copy that, go into the activity login to XML, which represents the UI for the login activity. And in the design tab, I'm going to just drag out a text view into the constraint layout have this be, let's say, 140 dp from the top, and it's centered horizontally. That looks good. And let's make the text here say emoji status. And I want this to be large because it's the title of our application. So I'll make this a display one maybe. And we'll also update the font. Let's make it sans serif medium to make it a little bit darker. Cool. So now we can go into the code tab and let's paste in the XML for that Google sign in button. And one thing I want to do is just update the ID to make it more match the style I like to use in a Kotlin app, which is BTN sign in. And let's see what this is complaining about. This view is not constrained yet. So we, now let's go back into the design section and figure out how to constrain it. Um, I'm going to center it horizontally. And this is a little hard to do because we're not seeing the actual UI here. So first what you should do is build the app and this at least should show up in the UI. Cool, now we see it and I want the top constraint to be below the text view. And I want it to have a margin, let's make it like 32. That looks pretty good, cool. And so if we actually run the app now, hopefully we should see the Google sign in button. Awesome, then so nothing happens when we click on it, which makes sense, we need to add the click listener next. So when the user taps on the button, what we're going to do is launch an intent to sign in with Google. And that intent is going to be created for us using the Google sign in library. So if you go back to the guides, then go back to the Firebase guide and we're going to copy this. These are options to configure Google sign in. This is the Kotlin code tab. So now we're going to go into login activity in the onCreate method. Just paste that in. You'll probably need to import some things. And one thing I'll just help to demystify a little bit here is that we have a request ID token and we never defined this string, but if you actually go into the definition, click the definition of here, you can see that we're getting these values to XML. Um, the string is coming from Google services. So when we integrated the library, we're getting all of these strings automatically. So that's one thing, one nice thing that the library takes care of for you. The next thing we need is the Google sign in client. And you can get that by calling the static method on Google sign in. You say dot get client and you pass in the context and the options, which we just defined GSO. So we capture that into a local variable called client. And now we can hook up the click listener on the button. So we called the ID of that button button sign in. So I'll say btn sign in dot set on click listener. And we're going to create a sign in intent here. And the intent is coming from the client dot sign in intent. And so now we need to start an activity, but it's not just starting an activity. We also want to get the result of that activity. Did the authentication with Google succeed or fail? So that's why we're going to call start activity for result. And that requires two parameters, one which is the intent, which we just defined, sign in intent. And the second is a request code, which can be kind of any arbitrary number. So I'm going to define it as a constant called RC Google sign in. And we're going to define that inside of a companion object, which is basically a way to hold all the constants or static variables in your class. So I'll say private companion object, RC sign in, and then this is going to be private const val. And you can kind of pick whatever you like. I'm going to make mine 4926. And then one more I'll add is a tag, because we're also going to be logging some things. And the convention I always use is the tag name is always the class name. So when start activity for result executes, that's going to launch the Google sign in flow. And that flow is going to give us a response. In order to capture that response, we need to override a method called on activity result. In order to help with that, let's go back to the guide and scroll down a bit. And here you can see the on activity result. So I'm going to copy that and paste it in right below the on create method. So right here. And then we called the request code RC Google sign in. So I'm going to change that. And you'll also, you're going to have to import some things. 
Well, I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit. Um, and basically what's happening here is that if the request code of the on activity result is the same one that we launched with, that means that we heard back from the Google sign-in intent, then the sign-in was successful, then we're going to call this method Firebase auth with Google. So in order to define that, again, let's go back to the guide. And here is Firebase auth with Google. So let's copy that. I'm gonna define it as another function here. And again, we're gonna to have to import some things. Here we need to define the Firebase auth library. So again, go back to the guide. And right here, um, we're gonna have a late init var auth at the very top. And then this auth is equal to Firebase auth is going to be how we initialize it. That happens in the onCreate method. So let's import Firebase auth. And then inside of the onCreate, we'll set it equal. And the thing that we skipped over here on number three is when the activity starts up, the first thing we want to do is check if the user signed in. Because if they're already signed in, we don't want to show them the login UI. We want to show them directly the main UI. So we want to actually copy this. So on start is a lifecycle method on the activity, which happens after the on create. So we're going to execute this and we're going to have this update UI method, which we can just define create function update UI, which is takes in a user as a parameter. And we'll fill that in in just a little bit. But going back down here, let's finish off what we were doing here. So now we have the Firebase auth defined. They're doing some sort of asynchronous request here to look at the credential and then see if we can actually update Firebase, our project, create an account or sign into an existing account with this credential. Um, I don't want to use a snack bar. I just want to use a toast. So I'm going to say toast this and then copy the message authentication failed. And the length can be short, that's fine. And then that's all we need. So if in the success case, we call update UI with the user, in the fail case, we call it with null. So we need to be able to handle the null Firebase user here, which is what this question mark indicates. All right, so we're almost done now. Um, what we wanna do in update UI is we wanna actually update the UI, which basically means we wanna to navigate to the main activity. So I'll leave that as a comment here. And there are two cases here, right? One is if the user is null, that means we shouldn't navigate to the main activity. They should try again and figure out how to log in properly. So in this case, we're going to just log something at warning level and we want to return early here. Otherwise, if we've gotten past that if statement, that means that we want to actually go to the main activity. And so in order to do that, we say start activity and we pass in an intent here. And the intent is going to be um, two parameters. One, it's going to be the context the second parameter is the destination. Where do we want the user to end up? And we want the user to end up looking at the main activity. So I'll say main activity. And the last thing I want to do, which is actually a common bug that I've seen with login UIs, is that we want to finish the activity here. And what that means is we don't want this login UI to show up in the back stack once the user has gone to the main activity. And so by having this line here, finish, that means that we're going to close down the login activity and that'll make a lot more sense to the user if they click back from the next screen. Let's try it. All right, so I'm gonna hit sign in and I'm going to log in with my personal account and let's open up Logcat and just see what happens. I'm only gonna filter by login activity. And so, okay, we can see that we did call Firebase auth with Google with some token. And then we got a success in the sign in with credentials, which is awesome. And so we did properly navigate to the main activity, which is where we're seeing hello world. And let's check that this worked by going into the Firebase console, go into authentication. And now we do see that there's one user signed into the app. Great. The last thing I want to do in this video is I would like to add a menu option in the main activity menu so that we can actually allow the user to log out of their account. The way that works is go back into Android Studio and I'm gonna create a menu resource directory. So make a new Android resource directory of type menu. And inside of here, we're going to create a new menu resource file called menu main. And we're gonna drag out a menu item and the title will be logout. And the ID can be mi menu item logout. 
that's all that we need to do from the menu perspective. Now we need to tell the main activity that this is the menu that you should be using in the menu bar. So go into main activity and there's a function here that we want to override called on create options menu. And so here we're going to say menu inflator. This menu inflator is an attribute on the context. So that's why we can just call it like that. We call dot inflate and we pass in the menu resource ID. So it's going to be r dot menu dot menu main and the menu, which is the parameter that we pass in right here. And this function returns a Boolean. So we're going to return true here just to indicate that we provided the menu that should be inflated. Now we want to get notified when the user has tapped on that menu option. For that, we're going to call on options item selected. We're going to override this method. And here the idea is that we're going to check if the item selected, which is the parameter here, if the ID of that is equal to r.id.mi_logout, which is the ID we provided to that logout menu option. So in this case, I'm going to just log.i, log at info level that we did logout. And this now requires defining a tag. So let's do that at the top. We're going to, again, have a private companion object with a tag private const val tag, and we're going to have it be the class name. And now we need to simply log out the user, log out the user. In order, in order to do that, we're going to do something quite similar to log an activity in order to retrieve the Firebase authentication instance. So go back into login activity and remember how we have this late init var auth, which is a handle on a Firebase auth object. I want to copy that over. And then inside of the onCreate method, we actually initialize it. So in onCreate, we initialize it. And now all we need to do is call this method auth.signout. And once the user has signed out, we want to navigate them back into the login activity because they have no business now being in our app in the main activity, right? So I'll say val logout intent is equal to intent. And then same thing here, we need to have two parameters, one which is the context, which is going to be this, referring to the activity, and the destination for where we want the user to go, which is going to be login activity. And one other kind of nuanced bug here is that if they do log out, we want to clear the whole back stack. Right? We don't, not only do we not want this main activity to show up in the back stack, but anything prior to that, we also want to, do, to dismiss. And so for that, there are some flags that you can set on the logout intent. So I'll say logout intent dot flags is equal to intent dot flag activity new task or intent flag activity clear task. So with these flags set on the intent, now we can call start activity with this intent. All right, that was a lot. Let's try it out and see if it works. And I'm going to open up Logcat and now let's look at logs by main activity, which is the log that we have right here. So we should hopefully now see a menu option, which is great, and it should show logout. So if we tap on that, then hopefully we see the logout, which is great, and we do navigate properly now into the login UI. So that's awesome. We now have the basics of authentication and sign-in working in our app using Google. The next step is whenever a new user account is created, that's when we want to trigger the cloud function to run, which will automatically add that user into Firestore. And Firestore is what is going to be powering the list of users and their emojis in this view. So if you found this was helpful, drop me a like and hit the subscribe button so you know when the next video comes out. See you soon. Bye.